Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Timbuktu Q Laptop Backpack 2.0. And the Q Backpack has a pretty special place in my heart as it was one of the first more serious bags that I got when I was leaving school. It was my graduation from kind of Jansport style and Swiss gear bags. And it really opened my eyes to how many great backpack offerings were out in the world. I just love the organizational options and the aesthetics offered by Timbuktu and I used the original Q bag for a while. I actually did an in-depth video on an earlier version of this many years ago on the channel. So if you wanna see how my videos have evolved over time, I'll make sure to link to that in the description below. In this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the aesthetic and organizational differences between this and the older versions of the Q backpack and also how it compares to some of the newer tech and EDC bags that we've looked at recently. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we take a look at popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. I definitely think that the look has been updated from the original to give it just more of a modern feel, and this matches up much better with the style of bags that Timbuktu has been releasing recently. So I think it has a versatile look that's minimal enough to fit in into a lot of different environments, whether you're taking this into the office, for walking around campus, or for exploring a city. And then moving into the materials, unfortunately Timbuktu doesn't list what this exterior fabric is on their site. I took a look at REI and they had this as a Cordura fabric. This material on the front does feel a little bit thicker and more rugged, so I could see this being Cordura. On the sides, you have a lighter kind of nylon or polyester-like material. Regardless, the bag feels solidly built. It reminds me a lot of the other Timbuktu bags that we featured on the channel that have held up well over the years. It also seems like this is gonna offer a nice amount of weather resistance, and then you have some great YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, on one side you have a handle that's going to allow you to carry this like a briefcase when you don't want to wear the bag on your back or for carrying this into a meeting. The handle is very simple, it doesn't have any sort of padding, so if you have the bag a little bit more packed out, it may dig into your fingers just a little bit. You also have a few attachment points if you want to hang something on with a carabiner. And then on the other side, I was happy to see that you have an external water bottle pocket. And this offers a decent amount of space. Currently what I have here is the same 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other daily bag videos. And that fits in there pretty comfortably. However, the volume on this pocket is pretty limited. It doesn't have any sort of elasticity and it gets very hard to fit anything thicker if you have the main area packed out. So that's something to keep in mind depending on what type of water bottle you like to carry. But I do like that the compartment is fairly deep and that it also hugs the bag pretty well when it's not in use to maintain a sleeker silhouette. As far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 20 liters, which is a really great daily bag size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me. And I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it maintains a really slim silhouette and hugs my back well, which makes it great for navigating crowded areas and jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have a nice amount of padding that's soft right out of the box. And then on the inside, you have this meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. And I like that the straps have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On the shoulder straps, you also have these rails that are gonna allow you to add a sternum strap. I was a little bit surprised that one wasn't included with the version that I ordered. I'll have to take a look to see if that's a mistake or if you actually don't get a sternum strap, that would be unusual because a lot of Timbuktu's bags do include one. And then of course, you also have the customary bottle opener on one of the straps here, which unfortunately is not removable, but still a nice kind of standard Timbuktu addition. And then moving into the back paneling, this is also pretty well padded. It has the same meshy material and soft padding that we saw on the straps. So it does help moisture from building up a little bit. Unfortunately, there's no sort of air channels or elevation here. So there's not a lot of ventilation while you're walking around. And I did notice that my back would still get a little bit sweatier. I do, however, like that they included this luggage pass-through, which wasn't on the original, that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while you're traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, this is an area where the bag really excels in my opinion. I just really love all the different pockets that are offered throughout. On the front, you just have a very simple quick access 
vertically zippered pocket that's gonna make it very easy to swing the bag around without taking it off and just reach into whatever you have here. This is a very simple compartment. It's not super voluminous. This is gonna be better for some flatter items such as a tablet or a notebook, maybe your phone that you wanna reach a little bit more quickly. Currently what I have in here is just this little pouch from side by side, which is great for holding some masks and some hand sanitizer that I might wanna have with me during the day. Besides that, not a whole lot of internal organization or anything like that, just a nice amount of space for anything that you need to toss in quickly. And then down at the bottom, you have this nice larger compartment that was also on the original Q backpack, but the layout here has been changed a little bit. I feel that this is much more usable in this format, it feels like it offers some extra space and is just easier to reach. And so this is gonna be a great spot for anything bulkier that you wanna reach while you're running around throughout the day. So you have plenty of space for larger items such as sunglasses, which is what I have here. I tossed in the ones with my protective case. And then I also have my GoPro Hero 3 Plus, which fits in there comfortably. And on the inside, you do have some slight bit of organization on the back you have a few slip pockets, which may be great for holding some flatter items. They don't have any sort of elasticity, so anything that you place in here is really gonna have to be a little bit thinner, but it's still nice to just have some separation from all the volume in this area. And then you also have a nice lanyard with a clip that's gonna be great for attaching something like your keys or a multi-tool. The next pocket that we're gonna take a look at is a larger kind of admin area that has some nice internal organization. And I like that this has the zipper that opens up a little bit wider to make it easier to see everything that's on the inside. And you can definitely reach all the different pocketing that's offered in here. So you have a nice amount of volume just in the compartment itself for larger items that you wanna toss in. So I just kinda of laid my portable power bank on the bottom there, just kinda of free floating since there wasn't really a pocket that was large enough to hold it. But I like that it has this area where you can just toss in other pouches if you need to, or maybe some gloves if you're in a colder climate. And then on the back of this compartment, you have some slip pockets that are gonna help you keep smaller items a little bit more accessible. So on the left, you have some small slots where you can place items such as a stylus or a pen, which is what I currently have here. And then to the right of that, you have a smaller slip pocket, which I currently have to hold my Apple Magic Mouse. These, like the other slip pockets that we saw earlier, don't have a ton of elasticity, which I would have liked to have seen to give you some more flexibility with what you can store. I also like when the compartments are elastic as they prevent anything from falling out. So I could see this slipping out of the pocket if I lay the bag down or if it falls over or something like that. And then behind those, you have some deeper slip pockets. Again, nice amount of space on these, but it's kind of tough to use these on the back. If you use the ones on the front, they all share volume and because they're not elastic, you kind of have to pick and choose how you want to organize these. So nice to have some extra options, but I do wish that elasticity had been included. And then you also have a little zippered pocket here that's going to be great for anything that doesn't quite fit into those slip pockets. This is a nice catch-all area for the items that I know I'm going to want to grab that are a little bit smaller. So I threw in my Apple AirPods and then I also tossed in a lightning cable and the power brick to charge my phone and tablet while I'm on the road. Taking a look at the laptop compartment, this is an area that's changed a little bit from the prior versions of the Q backpack. So this is now a top loading compartment, which makes it easy to access your laptop, particularly if you're on a flight and you wanna pull it out without bothering the person next to you. I did like on the previous version that it was a side access zipper. I thought that that worked well, particularly with the handle as you could hold the bag by the side and just reach in and grab it. I've always liked laptop compartments that you could access from the side. So that's just a small preference choice for me. This way still works well. It's easy to get your device in and out with the opening that's provided here. The compartment itself has a nice amount of padding on both sides. On the back, it's got this extra cushioning from the back padding and you have plenty of space. Currently what I have here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro, but you can see there's plenty of leftover space. You could definitely fit a 15 or 16 inch laptop, maybe even a 17 inch depending on the style. And I like that the compartment is suspended off the bottom of the ground. So your laptop is gonna be protected if you place your bag down a little bit harder. So I'll go ahead and pull my laptop out. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And I like that this comes up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here okay. Unfortunately, there's no sort of fleece lining or anything like that on the compartment to help prevent against scratching. But regardless, I still feel like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. And then the last area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the main compartment. And this is a top loading bag, but I like that the zipper comes down enough to give you a wide enough opening that you can still see 
what's on the inside pretty well. And at 20 liters, this is a nice amount of capacity. Even with the items that I have in here, there's still a little bit of leftover space at the top if I wanted to toss in a change of clothes or maybe a smaller lunchbox or something like that. Jumping into the items that I currently have here, I threw in my Beat Studio wireless headphones, and then I have a pouch down near the bottom. I have my Air Slim pouch, which I've been using a lot recently. If you wanna see how I pack this out, make sure to check out the in-depth video. I'll include a link to that in the description below. And then I also tossed in my DJI Mavic mini drone case. And then the last item that I have here floating around is my Levitate portable standing desk. Now with the compartment a little bit empty, you can get a better look at the inside. Unfortunately, the black lining makes it a little bit hard to see down towards the bottom, but you do have a decent amount of space. Although this does come up enough to be able to hold a packing cube and maybe a dop kit if I wanted to use this for travel, one thing I noticed is that it's not great for holding a lot of bulkier items, especially items such as my Beat Studio headphones. You know, when I had them in the case, it started to press up against these compartments and take up some of the volume. So that's something that you wanna keep in mind if you carry a lot of larger items with you on your day to day. But regardless, it still offers a decent amount of capacity. And then on the back, the only bit of organization you have is just this slightly padded slip pocket, which is gonna be good for holding some documents, a folder, maybe a tablet. That's what I currently have here. This is an iPad mini. You can definitely fit a 10 or 11 inch tablet. And this sleeve is a little bit suspended off the bottom of the ground and also thicker than many of the slip pockets that I've seen in other bags like this. So I like that it gives, does give you some extra protection whenever you need it. So just a really nice, simple layout in this this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. I really like the aesthetic and if you're looking for a comfortable and versatile bag that's going to offer a lot of awesome pocketing for your tech and EDC essentials and this is going to be a really good option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Q Laptop Backpack 2.0 over the past couple of weeks and you can currently purchase this on Timbuktu's site or sites such as Amazon and REI for about $100 which to me feels like a pretty reasonable price considering the features and build quality that this has to offer and it also compares well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, one of the first bags that this made me think of is the Air Day Pack 2, which has been one of my favorite tech and everyday carry bags that has come out recently. Like this, it has a lot of awesome organizational options, it has a great build quality, it feels a little bit more comfortable and weather resistant to me than this bag here. I really love the laptop compartment of that and it's gonna come in at a slightly higher price range but if you're looking for something that's gonna offer a very minimal and modern style and just keep all of your stuff very well protected, then that's gonna be a great option to check out. Another bag this made me think of is the Evergood Civic Half Zip line of bags. Those are just some really solid, more classically styled bags. They have a very minimal aesthetic that feels like it's gonna be very good for the outdoors and for walking around the city. Now the Civic Half Zip is offered in two sizes. They have the 22 liter version and the 26 liter version. Both of them can hold an impressive amount of stuff. The 22 liter is probably gonna be closer in size to this bag here. And it's also gonna have a simpler layout. It doesn't have as many pockets, but it does have two great external water bottle pockets, a comfortable harness system, and a great laptop pocket. So if you're looking for something that's just gonna be very versatile and keep things simple, then that's gonna be a great option to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Bellroy Transit Work Pack, which has been one of my favorite daily bags that we've looked at recently. It has a very sophisticated and minimal aesthetic that feels like it's just gonna look great with a more professional outfit. I love the clamshell style opening of that bag. It comes in at 20 liters, so very close in size to this, but it feels like it can hold way more just due to the simpler layout and that clamshell style opening. It's also comfortable to wear. It has great laptop protection. And if you're just looking for a bag that's gonna give you a little more flexibility with its layout and that can also work well for minimal travel, and that's gonna be a fantastic option to keep in mind. With that being said, the Timbuktu Q laptop backpack holds up well against all those bags. And if you're looking for a reliable, comfortable bag that's gonna offer a nice amount of organization, then this is still gonna be a really great option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the Q Backpack 2.0 and how it compares to some of the other great tech and EDC bags that we featured on the channel. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel. And if you found this video helpful, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.